Well, we have finished up the Supreme Court term. We have had some major breaking news in recent days at the U.S. Supreme Court. In particular, in particular, this past Thursday, we saw the opinions released in what for me and I think many others was the most anticipated case or really twin cases of the entire term. What did the Supreme Court do? Well, they actually ended systemic racism in America. I mean, you probably wouldn't know that. I mean, that's definitely not the headline that you're going to see, at least if you're tuning in to MSNBC, CNN, reading the New York Times op-ed page, things like that. But really, they ended systemic racism in America. The Babylon Bee actually had it best. The Babylon Bee said, Democrats devastated as Supreme Court bans racism. I speak here, of course, about affirmative action. So let's take a look at what the scene at the Supreme Court actually looked like this past Thursday as we were getting ready to release these major, major cases out of Harvard University and the University of North Carolina when it comes to affirmative action. And, you know, you see there these protesters who are mingling. I mean, it, the way these things work is when you actually go to the, so, yeah, so there we go, we, we, we see these protesters mingling. And, you know, the way it works is when you actually get there in line, anyone who's been to the Supreme Court will tell you, you don't actually know in advance what cases are going to be released on a given day. If you're expecting or hoping for a certain case, that's really all you can do is you can actually hope for that case. So these guys had no idea what they were about to see. But in Students for Fair Admission versus Harvard College and the University of North Carolina Chapel Hill, we have once and for all a definitive, a definitive ruling from the U.S. Supreme Court holding that affirmative action policies in higher higher education and university admissions violate not just Title VI, not just Title VI of the Civil Rights Act, but actually the 14th Amendment of the, of the U.S. Constitution itself. They violate the Equal Protection Clause. This is a ruling that many of us in the conservative legal movement have been pining for for years and years and years. Look, speaking personally, I mean, I remember when I, when I started at the University of Chicago Law School a decade ago, I mean, you think about kind of the big cases that motivate right of center students. Abortion at that time was one. Well, last term, we obviously saw the overturning of Roe versus Wade and Casey versus Planned Parenthood, its 1992 successor. And now we have seen the overturning of affirmative action. So it's just a really, really remarkable ruling. It overturns over four decades of Supreme Court precedent. The Supreme Court first started to go down this road in the late 1970s in a case called Bakke at the University of, of uh, California in 1978. They, they doubled down 25 years later in these two cases from the, from the University of Michigan called Grutter and Gratz. And then just last decade, they had these cases out of the, out of the University of Texas called Fisher, where they again decided they were not actually going to do anything and they were going to keep affirmative action in place. Now, the problem with affirmative action obviously is multifold. I, I, the listeners and the viewers obviously know this, but there are multiple glaring problems here. The first and foremost problem is that it is a flagrant violation as the court finally, finally held this past Thursday of the U.S. Constitution's colorblind nature. To take race into account when you make consequential decisions, such as who is admitted to a higher university, a higher education institution, a university, whether it's a college, a PhD program, whatever. To take race into account for that matter when you have government contracting decisions. That was a case in 1995 called Adiran versus Pena. To take race into account when you are giving out government benefits. These are not just morally irksome. Because again, we the people, going back to the Declaration of Independence itself and its famous pleas for, we are all endowed by our creator with unalienable rights. Uh, we, are, we are equal before God Almighty himself. It is not just morally irksome, but is also explicit violations of the Equal Protection Clause, the 14th Amendment. So really just, I cannot emphasize this, this enough. And you know, many of us were, were cautiously optimistic that the court would finally do this for the very simple reason that Chief Justice John Roberts, who is the swing vote on this court, he actually, if there's one issue where John Roberts has, has really been consistent on, it's actually the affirmative action issue. So John Roberts was nominated and confirmed by then President George W. Bush in 2005, and he's had a very topsy-turvy career. We obviously remember what he did to the Obamacare case back in 2012 when he rewrote that statute for the bench, but it was actually only two years after Roberts was confirmed in a 2007 case called Parents Involved out of Seattle, Washington, 
which also involved racial preferences, where he had this line where he said, quote, the way to stop discrimination on the basis of race is to stop discriminating on the basis of race. So many of us are cautiously optimistic because that's a very powerful quote, obviously, from John Roberts. But on the other hand, Roberts has had his ups and downs over the years. He joined the liberals just a couple, just a few weeks ago, really, in a case out of Alabama, a voting rights redistricting case called Milligan. So it, it really was not guaranteed to be this result. But I mean, I think I speak for many when I say that this is a result absolutely positively worth celebrating. A admittedly, it's not a result worth celebrating for everyone. I mean, here's how the New York Times spun. And so the, the New York Times, this, this was literally the New York Times take on the ending of systemic racism, i.e. affirmative action in America. The New, York, the New York Times tweeted, breaking news, the Supreme Court rejected affirmative action at Harvard and UNC. The major ruling curtails race conscious college admissions in the US. Here's the key part, all but ensuring that elite institutions become whiter and more Asian and less black and Latino. I, I mean, how disgusting and ludicrous is that take for any number of reasons? I mean, how implicitly racist is it to kind of spew out this this bile where you are implicitly assuming that that a ruling that does nothing other than uphold the colorblind equal equality equal under the law equal treatment before judges before politicians what is really going on here kind of getting out of the legal weeds for a second just talking about kind of the broader cultural moral struggle that that is going on here and that we saw play out between the dueling opinions, the majority opinion, which was a magnificent opinion by Chief Justice John Roberts, probably the most magnificent majority opinion of, of his career. What's really going on here between the majority opinion and the wonderful concurrences and the dissents from Justices Sotomayor and Katanji Brown Jackson is a conflicting view of society. I don't know how else to, to, to better simplify it than that. What you have here on the one hand is equality, actual, the equality of the Declaration of Independence, the equality of the Equal Protection Clause. We as human beings have unalienable rights. We, we, we have equal civil rights, statutory, constitutional, natural rights. We are equal before God. We are equal before the courts. We are just equal. On the other hand, and this obviously ties into the rise of the woke left over the past five, six, seven, eight years or so. We see these, this Ibram X. Kendi vision of intersectionality, of equity. And it's really just a whole bunch of crap. And finally, we have a Supreme Court that is willing to say that. So credit where credit is due. I, I have been very critical at times, certainly of Chief Justice John Roberts, also very much uh, as well for Justices Amy Coney Barrett and, and Brett Kavanaugh, who, although they are right more often than, than they are wrong, I, I do not think have the have the backbone and the courage of Justices Clarence Thomas and Sam Alito. But credit where credit is due. This is touching the third rail issue of race. It is obviously a dicey issue. And these justices all did the right thing there. Another man who is obviously vindicated here is Justice Clarence Thomas. Clarence Thomas, of course, in my opinion, the greatest living American, someone who grew up in the Jim Crow South. He, he was dirt poor. English was not even his, his, his first language. And he has been sounding the alarm about affirmative action and the use of race in making a university admission decisions, government contract decisions. Hi guys, it's Liz Wheeler. Don't forget to watch my show, The Liz Wheeler Show, every night at 7 p.m. on The First TV. You can download the free First TV app or you can visit thefirsttv.com slash Liz and start watching today.